We're going to build an entire portfolio from scratch. Today is episode number one. We're going to make this thing right here. We're going to move very quickly. And if you want to learn more about the techniques that you're going to see me use in these videos, I explained everything that I ever use in Blender inside my Blender course. We also help members build their portfolios and do some client outreach so they can become professionals. You can check that out with the link below. Now let's get to work. Product number one is going to be this thing right here. Get rid of the default cube with shift A. You're going to add a circle with 16 vertices. Fill the circle with F, inset a little bit like this, extrude up, scale down a little further. Take this edge loop over here and extrude it and lift it up on the Z axis like this. Fill, inset with I. Now extrude up one more time, inset, go to wireframe view and extrude down, extrude, scale up like this. This has to be very close to the edges. Now we're going to extrude this down to the bottom. Over here, we're going to bevel this with control B. Take this surface over here, inset with I, delete the face, take the edge loop here and go to face grid fill adjust the offset a little bit do the same thing down here at the bottom now select all the sharp edges you can do that very easily by just selecting a few of them then going shift g select similar face angles that's going to select all the sharp edge loops now you're going to go control b make a small bevel like this set the number of segments to two set the shape value to one now add a subdivision surface modifier with control 2 in object mode go to object shade smooth select everything in edit mode and press control n to correct the normals now go to edit mode and select this edge loop and place the cursor there with shift s with shift a you're going to add a new circle with 16 vertices scale that down so it's just a bit larger than the neck fill extrude up to around here somewhere inset with i extrude extrude up and scale like this then extrude again and right click and scale it up even further extrude it one more time and bring it up here to the top now select all the sharp edges but not these edges in here with control b you're also going to bevel these edges and add a subdivision surface modifier you can add a couple of loop cuts here if you want to adjust this shape select everything like this and lower it down a bit add a loop cut here control b to bevel Alt E extrude faces along normals and push this inwards like this. Now select these edge loops and bevel them with control B as well. That's going to give us this little ring. I think it's a little bit too thick. So we're going to redo it again. Select this go object shade smooth. We're also going to lift this cap up, go down here to the bottom, inset this with I extrude up, delete this face and bevel this edge loop right here. Place the cursor right here and with shift A in object mode, you're going to add a path curve, flip that sideways around the Y axis, delete the top two vertices, lower this back down. Now take the curve and you're going to reshape it a little bit so it looks like this little straw that sucks the liquid out so you can spray that shit out in object mode go over here to curve properties open up the geometry menu go down here to bevel set the depth to 0.3 we need another zero so let's do 0.03 now go up here to object convert to mesh select everything in edit mode and press alt e extrude faces along normals and move this inwards a little bit like this select the sharp edge out here shift g select similar face angles control e mark sharp with control n you got to correct the normals parent the straw to the cap with control p object parent the cap to the bottle with control p now the model is ready let's add some textures Go to the shader editor, select the cap, add a new material, go to material preview. By default, your HDRI is going to be this fourth shit, which doesn't really make any sense. So I usually switch that to courtyard, reduce the roughness, crank up metallic. You can adjust the color a little bit if you want to make sure you don't set the roughness to zero because that doesn't really make any sense, but set it to something like 0.01. Now select the body, press new, name this material glass, get rid of the principal shader with shift A. You're going to add a glass BSDF and plug that into surface. It's not going to look like glass while you're in Eevee, but once you switch over to cycles and you go to render view then it's going to look like glass now we have to make a label so we're going to go to google type in canva click on this first link you're probably going to make an account but it's totally free and it takes 15 seconds create a design down here click on custom size set the width to 1024 set the height to 2048 first from the element box we're going to add a square make sure that this square is aligned with the center then you hold down alt when you scale it up so it scales equally on all sides change the color to something blue like this i'm going to use this thing over here to make it a little bit more gray now in the element Elements box I'm going to search leaves scroll through this a little bit this one is for free so we're going to add this one rotate it a little bit then duplicate it then click on flip over here flip horizontal place this one over here now duplicate this again and place a third one over here on top and also rotate that a little bit more then go to text here add a text box place this down here you can name your water whatever you want just make sure the text is big enough and make sure to change the font to something that looks kind of fancy I'm going to try this font over here but I might change it later if it doesn't look good we're going to make this a little bit bigger than the label up here now add another text box and place it down here again you can write whatever you gotta write i'm gonna write this because this is something you would typically find in a perfume bottle or some other shit like this go back to elements search for a line add a line into the scene place that right here duplicate the line place it over here on the other side once the label's ready you're gonna go over here to file download then you gotta click on download again i don't know why you're also going to need another version of this label which is gonna be black and white this is gonna tell blender which part should be transparent and which part should be opaque so change the color 
color of this box right here to black. Now download this image again. Go back to Blender. Give me some loop cuts so we have some more faces over here on the front. We're also going to duplicate this in case we fuck something up. Now apply the subdivision surface modifier. Go to front view. Select a vertical edge segment exactly around the middle like this. With control plus, you're going to expand the selection. In face select mode, deselect a few face segments over here at the top. Now go to select select loops boundary loop Control e mark seam in face select mode select this with l then go u unwrap now in the shader editor you're going to add a principal bsdf node right here with shift a you're going to add a mix shader node plug the glass into one and the principal into the other plug the output into surface load up the two images that you downloaded into your scene the black and white image has to be plugged into factor now when you do this you're going to see that this part is glass but this part has a principal shader so we can change the color here to whatever we want we're going to change the color to this image right here now we just have to uv map this a little bit better and before you know it we got a beautiful bottle right here let's quickly set up a scene and render this press shift s cursor to world origin then with shift a you're going to add a plane scale this plane way up this is going to be the world surface push it backwards a little bit like this subdivide this a couple of times select some faces from the back and extrude them like this then select a few more in front of that and extrude them as well lower this down lower this down slide this edge backwards a little bit you can create some more hills if you want to now press ctrl 2 or Control 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier, object shade smooth, add a new material to this surface, reduce the roughness on that material, adjust the shape of these mountains a little bit, press 1 to go to front view, then press Control Alt 0 to align the camera with your view, press G and double Z to move the camera backwards along the Z axis like this, then in the camera properties, increase the focal length to zoom in a little bit like this. If you were doing this for an Instagram portfolio, you want an aspect ratio of 1 by 1, that's going to be ideal. So set the resolution to something like 1080 by 1080, you can go 1920 by 1920 if you want a higher resolution give me some more floor down here bring this a little bit closer now we're going to switch over to cycles and see what the scene looks like so far i'm going to need a suitable hdri so i'm going to go back to the internet and type in hdri click on this first link right here let's find something that looks cute maybe this one here is going to be suitable because it looks pretty cute so click on download now this is going to be in your downloads folder but hopefully you're going to have a lot more hdris on your computer so you can use them for all sorts of different scenes so i recommend you make a new folder somewhere where you're going to save all your hdris now go back to the shader editor over here switch to world here you can control the color of your background go to edit preferences add-ons search for node click on node wrangler right here then select the background node press ctrl t click on open right here here you're going to load up your hdri that you just downloaded you can adjust the rotation using this z-axis rotation that you see over here now when we go back to cycles this is what our scene looks like i want to improve the reflections on this bottle a little bit so with shift a, i'm going to add a cube go to the modifier tab add modifier generate mirror in edit mode move the cube to the side now you got a cube on both sides scale it up on the z-axis now this cube is reflecting from the bottle then we're going to scale it up on the y-axis now both sides of the bottle have this reflection here go to the material tab add a new material to the cube change the color to whatever you want i'm going to give it some sort of a dark blue color with shift a you're going to add a new area light in the middle of the world rotate that sideways like this g and double z to move it backwards you want to place this behind the bottle lift it up scale it up lift it up on the z-axis while the 3d cursor is exactly on the bottle you're going to go to rendered view set the pivot point to 3d cursor and rotate this light and place it around here somewhere you're gonna to have to increase the power to something like 1000 maybe even more than that now duplicate with shift d then right click then rotate around the z axis and place it somewhere over here if you need some more lighting you can place another one over here in the front now let's also add a little bit of liquid to the inside of this bottle we're going to move our view to the inside of the bottle select this edge loop over here and slide it up to where you want the surface of the water to be Control e mark seam and face select mode press l to select everything below that shift d right click p to separate selection edit this new object press f to fill here inset with i inset again delete faces select this edge loop and go to face grid fill add a subdivision surface modifier you're going to press alt s and slightly deflate this just so there's no collision between these two surfaces let's add another loop cut over here as you can see now there's clearly some liquid inside this bottle if you want to you can duplicate this material and change the color to change the color you have to go to the shading workspace this new material that we duplicated from the glass has to be renamed to liquid get rid of everything except the glass bsdf and the material output nodes plug the glass bsdf into material output change the color to whatever you want you can also increase the roughness a little bit that might look a little bit better the index of refraction for water is 1.3333333 that's going to change the way the light behaves inside this liquid it might look a little bit better it's up to you it's probably going to look a little bit better go to render properties scroll down to film open it up and check transparent now you're going to render with a transparent background so we can add our own custom background up here you're going to set the number of samples to something like 512 you can go higher than that but you probably don't have to make sure the denoise is checked 
go to render render image it just occurred to me that this is going to look a lot better if we have some depth of field to so select the camera go to camera settings enable depth of field move over here close to this bottle place in the 3d cursor on a vertex on the surface in the front shift s cursor to select it now in object mode go shift a empty plane axes then select the camera go to camera settings find where it says focus object and use this eyedropper to target this empty that you just created now go to rendered view set the f-stop value to something low like 0.5 that's going to make the background a little bit blurry now you're going to render your image render time is 12.67 seconds that's pretty good we can also make an animation from this image save as when you save this make sure to set the file format to png and make sure to set color to rgba to include alpha so you can have a transparent background so we can add a custom background save as image now we're going to go back to canva go to file create a new design custom size give me 1080 by 1080 because that's the resolution of the image that i just rendered create a new design, drag and drop this image into your scene, click on the image, hold down alt and make sure to align this with the canvas. Use this little slider to pull this down so you can change the background, change the background color to black just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. I went to Google and I typed in evening sky pink. I found this cute picture right here, open image, a new tab, right click, save image as, make sure you don't get a copyright bust if you're gonna do this, load this image into your scene. With alt, you're gonna scale it up as big as it needs to be, right click, layer, send backwards then go to edit image first we're going to scroll down here to the blur effect whole image set the intensity to something like 40 now we're going to go to adjust reduce the temperature increase the brightness reduce the saturation a little bit play around with some of these settings until the background looks a little bit more suitable i'm going to click on the rendered image in the foreground and go to edit image adjust increase the saturation a little bit we can also adjust the colors of this image to make it match the background a little bit better and now if you want to be cool you can go and add a new text box pick some fancy word to write if you don't have any ideas then just go around town and look at some posters or some billboards next time when you're watching some bullshit on youtube pay attention to the ads that you're getting take a picture take a screenshot take note of how they're doing the graphic design pick some fancy word like this one right here change the text color up here to white obviously the font has to be something cuter black ops probably isn't going to do it i think this font looks okay but i'm probably going to use a different one later on right click layer send backwards i found a font which i think looks a lot cuter now once you're ready go to file download download that's the first project ready to go total recording time for me is less than 57 minutes i'm recording a tutorial so it takes me a little bit more time than it would if i wasn't recording a tutorial so you can probably do this shit in less than 45 minutes if you need some more help putting your portfolio together or if you want to hang out with other people who are building proper professional portfolios then check out the course and i'll see you in the next episode tomorrow